So if you're watching this video, I'm going to guess that you've recently received one or maybe more than one waitlist decision from a school that you're still interested in. In this video, we're going to talk about why students are waitlisted, um, give you an idea of the scope of the waitlist, what happens from the colleges, and then talk about what it is that you need to do next, um, whether or not you're going to decide to stay on that waitlist. So let's get started. Why, are student, why do schools put students through this torture of the waitlist? Really, that comes down to a lot of um, what colleges, college admissions is, is really kind of a guessing game of how many students they need to admit in order to get X number of students when the fall semester starts. So they know that they need to accept, if they need 5,000 students on campus in the fall, they know that they need to accept more than 5,000 students because most students have applied to many places and they are going to decline their admission for many schools. So each year they're kind of trying to guess how many students do we need to accept so that we land at 5,000. So what they want to do is they want to really carefully manage that number. They don't want to under enroll, which is why they put some students on the wait list so they can come to you if they realize that they haven't accepted enough students and not enough students have deposited, but they also can't over enroll. If they want 5,000, they want to wind up at 5,000. They don't want to wind up at 5,500 because where are they housing those additional students? How are they feeding them? How are they giving them financial aid? There's not room for them in classes, et cetera. So what they'll do is they'll take other students who they believe are qualified, um, who can be successful at the university, but they're not quite ready to offer them admission at this point, and they'll put them on the wait list. It's kind of a little bit like a B list. And then what is going to happen is that number is going to be pretty big. Um, for many schools, you're going to find that the number of students who are on the wait list is somewhere in the thousands or even in the ten thousands. What you want to do is refer back to your letter and the wait list doc that I've also sent to you to get an idea about what the size of the wait list traditionally is at the school that's in question. Know that it's impossible to predict. Sometimes schools do change their um, kind of methodology from year to year and they might be doing something a little bit different. But overall, you will find that at most schools, the odds of admission off the wait list are typically pretty poor. It's typically um, much more competitive to get off the wait list than it was to get in initially. Just to kind of give you an idea about that, what that looks like, this data is from the common data set, which is information that schools provide um, and may make publicly available on their website. So this is Miami and Michigan, which tend to defer many, many of our students. As you can see, um, there's three columns. So the number of students who receive that same letter that you received, that is the number that are offered. So at UMA Miami back in 2021, that was just over 13,000 students were offered a spot on the wait list. Now, not everyone's going to accept that spot on the wait list. There are always plenty of students who, for one reason or another, whether it's finances, whether Miami wasn't their first choice anyway, um, lots of different reasons, students have decided, you know what, I I'm just not even interested in playing this game anymore. I want off. And so they don't accept their spot on the wait list. Um, in 2021, it looks like a little bit more than 4,600 students at Miami accepted that spot on the wait list. When all is said and done, Miami offered admission to only 13 students. That's something that's probably, you know, pretty typical um, going forward. And I'm willing to guess that it's not totally different in 2022 than it was in 2021, but 2022 data was not available yet and hasn't been made available to the public yet. In pretty much every case, you are going to see that for all schools, the 2020 numbers are going to be really high. And so I've noted that's the COVID year, and that is because schools basically panicked um, when the world shut down in March, and they accepted very, very large numbers off the waiting list. 2021 normalized so much, a little bit more, and then we had 2022. For some schools, I have data for that as well. I do think that this year will probably be closest to 2022. Um, so when that data is available, that's your best data to look at. Otherwise, 2021 would be my next best data for you to look at. And if you look in that doc, you're going to see that I have many of the schools, probably most of the schools that our students have been waitlisted to. So first thing to know is that that waitlist is not ordered. There is not a number one and a number 4,643 at the University of Miami. I really like to hold think of the whole thing as more of a, a waiting pool, if you will. So it's a whole pool of students. No one has any standing above any other students. You're all kind of in that, in that same location. So how do schools decide who's going to get taken? Well, what they need to do is they assess what they have and what they need. And that is based on their institutional priorities. Um, 
and you know really what their school is looking for. So they take a look at those deposited students and they get an idea as to whether or not any of the schools or majors are full. Perhaps they might look at that uh, list of deposited students and realize that, you know what, we have all of the business students we need, so we're not going to take any business students off the wait list. Um, or it might go down all the way to a granular level of major at some schools. Um, it ha might have to do with geography, in-state versus out-of-state, location within the country, international students, um, other demographics, uh, reasons, uh, males, females, all kinds of different things that are based on institutional priority and what they're looking for. Another thing that might make a difference is finances. So they're also looking to see of the financial aid that they floated out there that they committed to students who um, were already admitted, what financial aid is being used, what kind of scholarship dollars are being used, and do they have additional funding available to offer to students who are admitted off of the wait list? And if not, that's going to also drive who it is that they take. So what you'll notice here is that there's a whole lot of things here that are calling into who's going to get off the wait list and not a whole lot of things that you can affect at this point in time. They're just factual bits of information based on institutional priorities that you either meet it or you do not meet it. So you really can't control whether they even look at students who look like you. Because what's going to happen is they're going to pull the types of students they need, they're going to re-review their files, and they're going to decide who it is that they're going to offer admission to. When they do that, they want to offer as few spots as possible. So they want to reach out to a student, they want an answer pretty quickly whether or not they're going to come or not. They usually won't even send you a printed letter until after you commit that you're um, going to attend and assure them that you are going to attend there. Because again, they're, they're mindful of those data numbers too. They want to keep those admit rates down. So they don't want to be offering up admission to a student off the wait list who is firmly committed to the other school that they've deposited to. Along those lines, I just mentioned the magic words deposit. When do students find out when, if they're going to get off the wait list? In almost all cases, you are not going to hear from these schools until after May 1st. And that is because they need to know firmly who they have deposited from their initial list. Occasionally, there are some schools that might admit later in April. Um, sometimes uh, some larger state schools might admit kind of in that time frame or less selective private schools. Um, but the more selective the school, the more you can pretty much guarantee they are not touching it until sometime after May 1st. So your first decision is knowing everything that I know now about waitlist, do I even want to stay on the waitlist or do I just want to get off the merry-go-round and really take control of the situation? Look at these schools that have, you know, I am their A-list student and go to one of these schools that loves me. Um, you know, there is a lot to be said for being able to have certain plans and not dealing anymore with the uncertainty that you've been dealing with throughout the entire senior year. So that's your first decision. Then what you want to do is you want to go back and review that letter um, or that notification about the wait list. And for most schools, there's going to be a place where you need to either accept your spot on the wait list or decline your spot and withdraw your application at this point. You want to make sure that you are following directions um, about what the school wants to do. So they might tell you there, please accept your spot and do not send us anything else. And what they mean is do not send them anything else. Um, it's important that you follow those directions. So check the letter. You can also check the doc that I put together. If you find that the two conflict, let me know. It's possible that they've kind of changed uh, what it is that they're doing and I need to make some updates on my side. Um, and we can kind of suss things out a little bit together if we need to. Some schools, but not all, will accept some additional information, perhaps a letter of continued interest. You want to refer to my notes as to whether or not a particular school has a reputation or has in the past accepted letters of continued interest. I will tell you right now, Rutgers does not accept letters of continued interest. I know we have many students waitlisted there. The only thing you can do there is update your mid-year grades and wait. They do not accept any kind of other information. Um, so make sure you're following the directions. Basically, for those that wrote one of these back when you were deferred, it's very similar. It's a love letter to the school. Um, you're going to talk, um, give them a nice thank you for putting you on the list. You're going to give them some updates of anything that has changed for you, anything you've accomplished since you last applied. 
You are going to tell them why you like the school, why it's a great fit for you. Make them see you on that campus. That's what you're doing in that letter. Unlike your earlier deferral letter, though, you're going to be super clear here. If it's your first choice, say it. If you will deposit right away, say it. And if you are a full pay, well, find a tactful way to say it. So an, a tactful way is not, I will pay full price to come to your school. Um, I like to use something along the lines of, if I am admitted, nothing stands in my way of depositing immediately. I feel like that's a nice way to say it, but it's still getting the uh, point across loud and clear. And the timeline to send uh, one of these types of things, if a school accepts it, is really ideally within about two weeks of being placed on that uh, wait list so that they have it on file and you're all ready to go. The other reason I want you to do that is so that you've put all of your stuff out there and now your next step is really to move on. As you'll be able to see when you look at my stats, you'll see that odds are not great. Um, so the highest percentage of odds is that you are going to be at another school come fall. Um, in addition, the odds are really that they're not going to let you know either way before May 1st, so you need to pick somewhere else. You need to look at that list of other schools you've been accepted to, attend their admitted student days, and really work towards finding that place that is going to be the best fit for you. If you have any questions, definitely reach out. I'm happy to discuss. That's a lot of what I do um, you know, between now and the end of the year, and I wish you the best of luck.